few new things to show you. A um, few things to help with the payload and another few bits and bobs that we needed. Okay, so just running through a couple of things that we've got. We've got a garden hose uh, to be able to fill the, the, the motor home up with water. So it's a nice little thin one. Um, that's on a, a reel. It's a 10 meter hose, comes with all the attachments and stuff. And um, we just thought it would be quite handy for filling up with water. I know you are supposed to use as a food grade pipe or something, um, but we're not going to drink it. So it's just for showering and washing dishes and everything else. Yeah. Next, we've got some non-slip mats just to be able to put into the cupboards. Uh, so you can just cut it to size and put it in the, the cupboards and drawers just to help with all the clanging and moving about as we're driving. So pots and pans and cups and everything else. Then, we also got a smoke and carbon monoxide tester. So it's a combined tester uh, just to go in the kitchen to keep us safe. Uh, we got a refillable gas bottle, a gas -it system. It's a little combo thing that we got. So we got the regulators and pipes and everything else, but I'll take you through that separately and show you what we've got and putting it in. And then last but not least, we've got the Max Fan Air Deluxe um, in, the, in the smoky lid that we went with. Um, and we've also got the shade to go with it, the LED version of the shade as well. So again, we'll show you the, the fitting and putting that in and we've just got some silicon and well, silicon and the, the sealing tape to be able to fit it. Um, the payload was a bit of an issue. We went and got it weird. Um, the Max weird thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the it's a three and a half ton vehicle. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah. We've got a, a max weight of three and a half ton um, and when we got a weight the, the tailor came in at 3,400 which gave us 100 um, to be able to work with on, on as part of our payload. So that did include a full tank of water, one full gas bottle and one quarter-ish full gas bottle. Um, it also included me. Um, um, <laughs> yeah. But it didn't include the dogs, and the dogs themselves are 100 kilograms, the three of them. Hmm. So we need a bit more. Yeah, and obviously we still need to be able to take fuel and um, everything else. And I know there is a case, I guess, that we, we won't always have necessarily full water, full gas, full fuel, but there will be times we will, because when we set off for a trip, um, I'd just like to know I'm okay. So no doubt our first stop will be fill up the gas, fill up with fuel, and I'll leave with a full tank of water because I don't want to be hunting for water en route just to make sure we're okay when, when we hit there. Um, so there will be times we'll have it, and then obviously shortly down the road we'll start using the gas, we'll start using the fuel, and that'll free up a bit of weight there. Um, but I think we just wanted to know we could have everything topped up and still have a little bit of headroom should we need it. So I've done a few things to help so far. Oh, Scott has. I filmed. Um, <laughs> We have removed the tow bar, mm -hmm. which was about 25 kilograms, yep. which we were never going to use. Mm -hmm. And we have also removed the generator. Yeah. So there was an Electrolux um, travel generator that came with the, the motorhome. Um, it wasn't working um, and it, can't, it sat in its separate little box just underneath, close to, to where the gas cabinet is. Um, and uh, obviously I could try and give it a go to try and see if I could get it good working. And we, we thought about it um, and then doing a little bit more research, it does seem like they're not the most popular things um, on campsites and other places, as, as I can understand, I guess, they're not, they're not always that quiet. Um, and when we're thinking about where we're going to be camping, a lot of it will be um, where we wild camp where we can, which obviously is, that's the one place that might be sort of of value, but again, it'll probably be too noisy. Um, and if we are stopping on any campsites, it'll be a bit too noisy. Um, and if we're stopping at any spellplatz or air de rest uh, uh, stops, <laughs> the French versions of it, um, well, again, we probably wouldn't want to be running a generator because they tend to be in a little village or somewhere else or in residential areas and it'll be a bit too noisy. Mm -hmm. So we've got the two laser batteries um, and the solar panels to be able to run lights and the 12 volt. Um, we've got gas, which will be able to run the fridge run the hot water and run the um, heating as well. There is a um, air conditioning unit on top of it as well that runs off hookup. Um, 
but we're, we're trying to reassess on that whether we we potentially keep that or get rid of it which is part of the reason we got the the max air fan um, to be able to look at if that's going to be better for us with the dogs because obviously you can set it on a thermostat um, and it'll open up and start running so if we do need to leave the dogs in the, in the motor home for a little while and we need to go out um, that will be able to kick in and keep them cool so it doesn't start to overheat and keep the air circulating and also just when we're at night when we're sleeping we can keep it going because of the rain shield that it's got on it we can just keep it going keep fresh air coming in with the dogs and in there so we're going to use that run with that see how it works if that's enough then we might look at removing the the aircon unit uh, we just don't know at the stage whether we need it or not so we thought best to leave it on for now yeah. at the moment we're just replacing the back vent mm. with the max fan leaving the aircon where it is and then if we remove the aircon we'll just probably put a skylight or a, another vent to the pop-up vent yeah in its place yeah, Catherine had a really good point because we were thinking of using the max fan to replace where the aircon is, but it's a smaller hole, so you'd have to get. Uh, well, they, they do have the ones that fit it. It's I think it's the American version um, of it, so it's a 14 by 14 inch instead of the 40 by 40 centimeter. Um, so we thought we could get one that'll fit there, but I don't know if it's the best place for the max air fan because it, it would be letting sort of sunlight into the middle of the, the motor home. Um, it's right in the middle, so you're probably not going to get much of an airflow or anything else going through. Whereas the fan that we're looking at replacing is just above the kitchen, which again the max fan will be really handy for a bit of extra ventilation and get a bit of heat out. It's a bit dark where the kitchen is as well, um, so that's why we went with the, the LED version of the shade, so that'll actually give us some roof light in that area, which would be quite nice. There's not a lot of light at all. No, the there's an under cabinet, which we're going to be changing, an under cabinet in the kitchen where you're cooking, but then nothing else in there. And obviously there's no, not much for windows. And so it's a bit of a dark sort of area. So that'll give us a bit of a uh, nice, it's not a ridiculous light, um, but it, it'll give us enough light, a little bit of roof light with LED. Um, and obviously we can, it will run with the, the shade shut as well, so like at night, you know, or, or even during the day if it's a bit too warm you can close the shade and then it'll gently run the fan if need be. And also the extraction, oh, the kitchen extraction is not great, but it is right next yeah, to the back there. door, yeah. but yeah. Um, it'll just give us a bit of it. Yeah, and another option. Yeah. That's John Snow's not really <laughs> <laughs> So we've still got a few items to look at for the, the payload. Um, the satellite dish is one of the other things because again, we don't know if we're gonna use that. So we've left that on for now because um, it might be more of a chew to take it off than, than it's worth. Um, but we've got a few options like that. So we might go do another way once we've got the gas bottle in uh, just to see, you know, after all the changes we've done where we're at. Well, we didn't say on the generator. We did save uh, no, 30 odd kgs, 40 kgs. It was quite a bit. So between the two of them, between the tow bar and the generator, it was about 80. You start alone, and then obviously on the gas bottle, we're saving about 40 on that. So you think we're, 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 we've got well over a, an extra 100 to add in, which should give us quite a bit of comfort with the dog's food um, and clothes. But it would also be nice to have the payload to be able to have someone with us as well. So that's the next thing, which we might have to think, well, if we've got someone, we'll just have to make sure we only carry half water or you know less fuel or one one at a time kind of thing um so we'll work on that or we might have less food or, or something else we can we can make a plan we had a bad experience last time we went to a, in our van to italy and i said my fault that we didn't need to fill up with water before we went and then when we got there it was minus 15 and water was frozen everywhere so we couldn't find we it. couldn't find so <laughs> anywhere to fill up with water i felt bad afterwards <laughs> that we did actually waste some time just looking for water so we were driving around looking for the, the sort of water fill up points and trying to find because you had to get tokens so we're trying to find where we could get the tokens trying to find the water we eventually got some tokens and the water was frozen so we couldn't get it anyway so yeah, we ended up with bottles and, and the gas wouldn't work because it was too cold and it was frozen. And <laughs> so I think it's just trying to be prepared this time yeah. to think if we've got the water, I want it in there and knowing that we've got the water and we're okay. Yeah. So I'll take you through, well, very, very briefly. I'm not going to show you in great detail fitting the gas bottle because I wouldn't advise probably fitting it the way I'm going to end up having to fit it. I'm no expert, but I'm going to give it a crack. Um, 
and as well as we'll eventually do the Max Air Fan. We've been waiting for a few days of sunshine in England. That's asking for a bit, I think. Kind of so, missed us a lot, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we had a few good ones. Then we decided to order the fan. The fan arrived. We only had one or two more days, and then the showers came and, and rain, and okay, it's been on and off after that. So I'm just a bit nervous because I'm taking the vent out, putting the new one in. I just want to know that I've got one or two days to work with. Um, and give it a good amount of time for all the sealant and everything else to dry before before lashes are done again just to make sure I've done an okay job so yes yeah, so link in for the the gas bottle and everything else this mm -hmm. is what we've got well everything actually we'll put a link for for what we bought um, where we bought it from so the gas bottle I got quite a good price actually on eBay um, it came as the package so it came with all the filaments and everything on it and it was pretty close to what like some people were just selling a gas bottle for so it's quite good i got like everything i needed to be able to, to hook it up um so we'll put a link in for that uh, from from who we got it from um that was uh, 180 ish yeah i was gonna say 200 yeah i think it was like 180 186 pounds i think um and we sold the gas bottles that, that we had had a bit of one was full one had a, a tiny bit of gas in it for 80 quid so 80 pounds so, you know, it's only going to end up sort of costing us like £100 or something to be able to get the gas bottle. And hopefully a lot cheaper to fill up as well. So that'll be the next great adventure we'll take you on. We'll have to go figure out how to put gas in it. So that'll be exciting. Yeah. We've still got bits to buy, like I haven't got the European attachments yet. But we'll buy those obviously before, before we head off. Mm. We're going to see how we get on with one. We may buy a second. Mm. Um, but I think... I was keen just to go for it, put two in. Catherine was the sensible and, and talked me out of it. Because, it, and, and she is right. It's and now I've got that recorded so that when <laughs> one is plenty, I can say. <laughs> because part of it, I think, is the thinking of we always need loads of gas and we've got to have two bottles to be able to see us through because we don't want to run out. But the whole idea is that we're going refillable. So although it's only 11 kgs, even if it only lasts us five days, we can fill up and we will be traveling. I think that's also the difference in how we tend to travel. We don't tend to sort of park up for two, two weeks at a time or a week. We tend to like almost move every night or every other night. So we might only stop for two, maybe three, but probably the longest that we do stay, like three nights we might stay somewhere. But we don't tend to do massive trips. We might be, we stay somewhere and then do an hour or so, two hours drive to somewhere else and stay there and then uh, same thing sort of just keep sort of chugging along go to different places and see new things so obviously on all those chugs we'll, we'll be able to pull in somewhere and get some so it's not like we'll have to leave the campsite to go put in gas and come back we should just be able to get it hopefully en route uh, we'll, this is in theory obviously after our first European trip we'll test that um, and hopefully it works but it does mean that we can just fill up but what I'm worried about is that when we hit winter and stuff like that, if it is quite cold, that we will start sort of chewing through the gas because we'll have the uh, fridge running on it and the, the heating and the uh, hot water and that. Um, so we might go through it quite quickly, in which case we might then have to reassess and get a second bottle if we need to. But the, the sort of setup that I've got sort of allows for that. We've gone with a, a cheaper regulator and everything else just to test it for now. Um, because you can get the crossover integrated regulator crossovers and stuff like that so we'll go for one of those if we end up going for two um, so we've got a, a good setup for one but that can be then flicked onto two easy enough we also do quite a bit of barbecuing so we've got our kadak mm. which at the moment we've got a four and a half four kilogram and a half, yeah. uh, gas bottle for but we are maybe thinking about putting an external gas point yeah yeah, so I, I might fit it somewhere close to the gas locker, save myself, or potentially on the other side by the kitchen, just trying to see where the gas pipes are and how easy it's going to be to be able to fit it. I am hesitant to drill through the body of the, the murder home. For, the, for the, the refillable gas, I'm just going into the skirting, so I'm chickening out on that um, and going in with that. Um, but we'll see where we can fit that, we'll be good. And then we might also get the adapters to be able to use the little gas bottles with it as well so we don't have to lug the, the four and a half kg with yeah, us. Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to take it down onto the beach and things, which when you have to carry your gas bottles, not exactly. Mm. Right. All done.